Well, welcome to family Bible time. We're in Matthew chapter 1 and, or Genesis chapter 1. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time today, Happy New Year. This is the beginning of a new tour through the Bible. We're going to be going a lot uh, lot, um, slower through the Bible, but our portions are going to be smaller, just a couple of chapters um, so I'm hoping that the, the overall thing will be shorter each day, just one chapter in Genesis, one chapter in Matthew today, and that'll be the pattern. We're following the Robert Murray McShane Bible reading plan. It's split into two years. You can find the links in the description below and over the last couple of days uh, to the to where you can download the Bible plan. You can take screenshots of it. You can print it. You can put it in your Bible you can also uh, find this on version. I've got a link for you in the description below. <laughs> so don't forget, by the way, if you click subscribe, we're going to get we're going to get so fashionable and updated, <laughs> and um, into YouTube culture today. So if you <laughs> click subscribe, <laughs> ding, that was the bell for you. If you click subscribe, you'll get a notification every day when we upload these videos. So um, maybe you're following this in the church app. But we are going to do family Bible time. This is going to be a two-year journey. So join us. We're following through that plan, uh, and it's split over two years. I hope that it'll be a blessing. We're going to read the whole of the New Testament this year, half of the Old Testament and the Psalms, and then we'll read the whole of the New Testament and the other half of the Old Testament and the Psalms next year as well. So... Little less each day, but less is more, as they say. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we praise you for a new year. We praise you for your kindness, blessing us with another opportunity to begin again reading your word. We praise you and we pray that you would be glorified, that you would change us and help us and correct us. And this year, Lord, where we need to be strengthened by your word. Please be with us and strengthen us and and equip us for the tasks that you have in front of us. Prepare us. Lord, enable us to be faithful servants of yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Genesis, the book of beginnings, uh, written 14... That's a lot of uh, my own notes, isn't it? Um, (laughs) Written when Moses... After Moses had left Egypt, the Exodus 1445, 1446 BC, so about in big terms, about 1500 years BC, written by Moses, um, along with the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, Genesis, gives us the only inspired record that we have of these, these, these uh, historical episodes that were that took place long before Moses wrote them. We wouldn't know about this if God hadn't inspired Moses to write it down, but he did, and we've got it, so we're going to read it. Let's read Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse, from the waters that were above the expanse, and it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening, and there was morning the second day. 
And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Now we're going to see these repeated phrases again and again. God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. God saw that it was good. Evening and morning, the first day, evening and morning, the second day. And with every act of creation comes a word of command. Let there be light. Let there be an expanse. Let the waters under the heavens and let the earth now sprout vegetation. Verse 11, and God said, let the earth sprout vegetation. That's got nothing to do with sprouts. Um, sprouts are an <laughs> obvious part of what happened after Genesis chapter 3. That's the effect of the fall. Um, <laughs> that's my own opinion. Um, anyway, uh, corrupted vegetables. Um <laughs> Sprout vegetation. Let the earth produce vegetation. Vegetate. Vegetation, I think, is in, in Hebrew. Plants yielding seed and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. So now we've got another phrase that we keep getting. Mm -hmm. And it was so. And it was so. And so, so God speaks... Mm -hmm. And it happens. Now, very often I speak and it doesn't happen. That's like normal, isn't it? <laughs> so it's really painful to realise how weak and incapable we are. Um, but this is God. Mm. God says it. The word of God goes forth and in response, creation obeys. Wow. Mm. The earth brought forth vegetation, verse 12. Plants yielding seed according to their own kinds and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. Why evening first and then morning? Well, day God created night and day and he obviously set the earth spinning and... Uh, from the perspective of where this is being spoken about, the first thing to come after the, the first, when the first day was created, the first change in the day was evening first, wasn't it? So it turned into evening and then it turned into morning and that was then the end of the first day. Day, evening, morning, end of one day. Um, now, uh, and God said, verse 14, let there be lights, this is plural, lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. Hold on a minute, God already created light, so he created light before he created the lights. So there was light before there was the sun and the moon, and the stars, and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and years, and let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth, and it was so. Verse 16, and God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, that's the sun obviously, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars, and don't you just like that little phrase? And the stars, and the stars also. Um, and verse 17, and God set them in the expanse of, of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures and let Birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures. Now, um, in the old Bible, it said 
great Wales and Welsh people always cheered at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't that kind of Wales. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kinds. Okay, there are different kinds, different groupings of animals. And that, they don't correspond to the, all the different modern species, but they do have their own, what God, their own categorization, what God called kinds. And every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them. Now here's another phrase that we're going to have repeatedly. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds, livestock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds and livestock according to their kinds and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Now, a little side note, uh, evolutionists often poke fun at creationists, and, and I, I'm a creationist. But evolutionists often poke fun at creationists and they say, how could all the species of the... Oh, animals fit on the ark. What complete nonsense, they say. And what do you think the answer is? They have to be small. They could be just small versions of those animals. They could, be, they could have taken young, couldn't they, onto the ark. Um, but also, if you go back and you say, what, what were the different kinds that God created? You, Noah would have only had to take two of each Kind. kind, not necessarily two of every species, because the different species can develop using natural selection and the variation within the genetic um, pool, you could say, um, so that all the different current different species could develop from a few basic kinds, like you could say the horse kind, although it would have been a an ancient version of the horse. So um, it's very helpful to realize that. Verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image. Now notice the plural, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. That means you have to have dominion over spiders and over sharks. And you have to not be afraid of things that uh, unnaturally afraid because God has created us to have dominion over them, to rule over them. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Male and female, created in the image of God. That's really helpful, isn't it? How, how, are, uh, uh, how is mankind different from the animals? Yes, what's your question or comment? Make, he hadn't made Eve yet, so why does it say mm. male and female? Ah, that's a very good question. Well, because this is a summary. Let us make man... In verse 26, you, you could say mankind, um, because this is a summary statement. In chapter 2, we're going to get the, the details which give us the specific creation of Adam and Eve. And that's going to give us more detail on what happened on day 6. So, at this point, it's just talking about the creation of mankind, male and female. Mm -hmm. So it is including Adam and Eve. But in chapter 2, it's going to give us the details that Adam came first and then Eve. Is that good? Okay. As long as it makes sense to you. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. Here we go. He blessed the animals. And now he's blessing mankind. He's God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. And fill the earth and subdue it. 
and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. So they were vegetarians. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. So even the animals were vegetarians. And it was so. And God saw everything he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Now before you turn to Matthew, just note these, verses, this, these words in verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was... Very good. Very good. That's God's verdict on God's creation. At the end of day six, he's looking at everything he's made, which includes male and female, which includes all the animals. And he says it's very good. Now, our evolutionist uh, opponents would say that in this whole period, there's millions of years with death, disease, and animals chewing each other up and dying in agony from diseases and because of what they see in the fossil record. But we know that they're interpreting the fossil record based on an understanding of the fossil record based on basically atheistic philosophy that says everything's been always the same it's always just happening very slowly over millions of years what we see happening now is what's always happened that's how we're going to interpret the geology that we find whereas creation scientists come to it and say no look okay here in genesis chapter one at the end of genesis chapter one we've got all the animals we've got all every creature created by god we've got the whole creation and god says it was very 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 good that's right it was only one very very good she's correcting me i think okay very good so that's the, that's the picture that god gave and god gave dominion to humans over the whole creation he wants us he wanted us in the original creation verse 28 to be fruitful multiply fill the earth and subdue it people are not the problem people are actually the solution to the wildness of this world we are to subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth okay that's God's creation mandate. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 1. And we will, real quick, um, Matthew chapter 1. This is another beginning. Not more, Matthew. Matthew chapter 1 is the beginning of the New Testament. Well, this is the day of beginnings. Uh, Matthew's gospel written by Levi. Matthew, uh, who was called by Jesus, he was the tax collector called by Jesus and um, probably written in the uh, really early, it was the, uh, the first of the Gospels written um, in the early 50s, I'd I guess. Uh, so we're not exactly sure, but definitely early in the history of the church. The first of the Gospels written according to the Old Testament, according to the early church's testimony. Okay, Matthew chapter 1, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah, the father of Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez, the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Aminadab. Aminadab, the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, by Rahab. Now, notice the women that crop up here. Tamar, Rahab. Now, there's going to be another one. And Boaz, the father of Obed, by Ruth. And these are, this is interesting, isn't it? Rahab was a pagan woman. Ruth was a pagan woman. 
Moabites. And Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of David, the king. Now, what is this? This is the line of Jesus, isn't it? And David was the father of Solomon by the wife of Uriah, and Solomon, the father of Rehoboam, and Rehoboam, the father of Abijah, and Abijah, the father of Asaph, and Asaph, the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram, and Joram, the father of Uzziah, and Uzziah, the father of Jotham, and Jotham, the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah, and Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh, and Manasseh, the father of Amos, and Amos, the father of Josiah, and Josiah, the father of Jeconiah, and his brothers at the time of the deportation to Babylon. Jeconiah, by the way, is, is the same as Jehoiah. Do you remember this? Jehoiah Chin. Remember? Kim had a chin. So Kim, Jehoiah Kim comes first and Chin comes next. Jehoiah Chin was um, the man who was a king at the time of the deportation. Um, so, by the way, in this... In this genealogy, it skips <coughs> Jehoiakim and Jehoahaz. And also, when it says Jehoshaphat, the father of Jehoram, and Joram, the father of Uzziah, it skips Ahaziah, Joash, and Amaziah. Um, now, I haven't got this memorized, by the way. This is, I've written this in the margin of my Bible. But it's helpful to realize that what we're being given here is a selective genealogy. Not every generation is listed, but this is to help you to remember the line. Actually lists David twice. And that's important because it's, it's, a, it's something we should realize that was given by Matthew to the early church. This is Matthew's Gospels written to, to really to help Jews. It's written towards the Jews. There's a lot of quotations from the Old Testament. But it's going to help Jews to realize that Jesus is the true king. Verse 12. After the deportation to Babylon, Jeconiah, the father of Shealtiel, and Shealtiel, the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel, the father of Abiad, and Abiad, the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim, the father of Azor, and Azor, the father of Zadok, and Zadok, the father of Achim, and Achim, the father of Eliad, and Eliad, the father of Eleazar, and Eleazar, the father of Matan, and Matan, the father of Jacob, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Oh, hold on. It's that Joseph of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. Now, what does Christ mean? Christ is the Greek word meaning Messiah. It's the Greek version of the Hebrew word Messiah, isn't it? It means anointed one. And the anointed one was the Messiah, who was the king of Israel. Now, notice in verse 16... It doesn't say anything about Joseph being the father of Jesus. It says, Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham, Abraham to David were 14 generations. And from David to the deportation of Babylon, 14 generations. And from the deportation of Babylon to the Christ, 14 generations. And this is Matthew giving us his inspired genealogy. He was inspired by God to write this selective genealogy so that the Jews of his day could memorize it. I mean, that's a really handy m memory device, isn't it? To break it down into 14, 14, 14. Skip a few here and there. Repeat David twice. Um, it's, it's not so much important that every person is included it's important that you can trace the line all the way from abraham through david to jesus and to show that jesus is a legitimate descendant of abraham but also descendant of of david the davidic son the son of david so jesus is called christ now here comes the story about the birth of jesus now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man, un unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But, she consid and, but as she considered these things, behold, an angel of the... Thank you. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, 
For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. What does Jesus mean, by the way? <clears throat> Jesus is a version of Joshua, isn't it? Yeshua. It means saviour, in essence. You, you, sh you shall call his name Jesus for, because he will save his people from their sins. So what kind of a saviour will Jesus be? Oh, yes, Jesus is one day going to come and rule and reign on David's throne, isn't he? But first and foremost, Jesus is coming, the Messiah is coming to save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not. That's a polite way of saying that they didn't sleep together. They didn't have sex. He knew her not until she had given birth to a son. And he called his name Jesus. Now, isn't this wonderful? Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Do you see, as we begin this year, as we begin again, a new year, do you see that you need to be saved from your sins? That is the biggest thing, isn't it? The biggest thing. Are you saved from your sins? Jesus came to save his people from their sins. How did he do that? We know he did that by going to die upon a cross to take our punishment, to actually bear in his body the punishment for our sins, for my sins, instead of me. And I'm just going to say as we begin the year, do you know what? You can begin this year mm. knowing that your sins are forgiven. If you repent, if you go to God and say, oh God, forgive me, for all my sins because of what Jesus did on the cross, dying for sinners, and, and you repent of your sins, you turn away from those sins, you confess them to God, you ask for forgiveness, you can never deserve it, can you? But Jesus died for, for sinners, didn't he? He died to save his people from their sins. And I don't know about you, but I need saving from mine. <laughs> um, I don't know anyone that doesn't need saving from their sins because God's judge it, judgment is waiting for, for everybody unless you repent and turn to God through Jesus. So begin the year knowing that your sins are forgiven. Mm. Father in heaven, we praise you and thank you for your word. We thank you that you made all things good, but we know that all things are not good now and that we are not good, and that we need your forgiveness. Thank you for sending Jesus. And thank you for this new beginning of a new study and a new year. We pray your blessing upon it, not just today, but throughout the year. And we pray that even today you would save someone and enable someone listening to this to turn to you and to know that as the year begins, they are clean. As the year begins, their sins are forgiven. And they are right with you. Help us to have that confidence as we go forwards that Jesus died to save his people from their sins. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We're done for today. God bless you. Camera, <coughs> camera lady, would you do your stuff? We'll mm -hmm. say goodbye. We'll say we'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. tomorrow. This is just a beginning. But we're excited to begin. We'll be tomorrow in Genesis 2 and Matthew 2. Until then. God bless you.